Okay, so now just some finishing touches and we're done. So the first thing is this game is not very much fun because it starts out solved. So the first thing we want to do is scramble these tiles up. And you can't just pick random positions for these things because there's actually parity here. And about half of the random board positions are not solvable. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to call up, down, left, and right in some random combination um, let's say a hundred times to scramble the board up. So let's define a function scramble and for var i is zero, i less than a hundred, i plus plus. And if this isn't scrambled enough for you, you can increase this number here. I'm going to pick a random number, and that's going to be a number between 0 and 1. So I want roughly 1 quarter to be um, ups and 1 quarter to be downs and 1 quarter to be lefts and 1 quarter to be rights. So if r is less than 0 0.25, then I'm going to call up. Else, if r is less than 0 0.5, I'm going to call down. Else, if r is less than 0 0.75, I'm going to call left. Else, if r less than, actually, it's always going to be less than 1. So I'm just going to call right. And then I'm going to call scramble after I've resized. Now, each slide is going to take 200 milliseconds, but, um, but that's OK because they all get processed asynchronously. So if you have multiple animation events, they all happen at the same time unless you make use of callbacks, which is a more advanced topic. And that's actually what I want here. I want everything to happen at the same time. So let's go ahead and reload and see what we get. Okay, so that's random. Let's hit it again, see what we get. One more time. Eh, kind of fun. So let's go ahead and solve that puzzle. So um, it would be nice to implement a function that gets run after each tile move that checks to see whether these are in order and then does something cool like pop up a congratulation message if you um, have solved the puzzle. But, um, but I think this project is long enough for a final project in the course. So I'm going to not do that. Um, I'm just going to make it look a little nicer and then call it a day. So let's go to the CSS. And uh, let's make the body background color be gray. And let's put some border radius on this. Um, and actually, I want to do this in JavaScript because I want it to scale as the, um, as the tiles get resized. So in my resize, on the tile, I'm also going to set the CSS border radius to, let's do 5% of the tile size times tile width. Let's see if that worked. Oh, it uh, radius the tiles and that's fine for the radius. But I'm not getting my background color. So let's look at the CSS again. Did I save that? Oh, so here's a trick that I learned from Po Chin. If you open uh, 
the debugger. Oh, it's not doing anything here. Hmm. So open the debugger. And then hold down the reload, select hard reload. Okay, so yeah, it just hadn't loaded the CSS. All right, so that looks good to me. Now I want to get rid of all those console messages, particularly when the thing's getting animated. So that's probably why it's not responding very well. So let's go ahead and in JavaScript, I'm going to find console and I'm going to comment all these out. That's it. So we'll save and reload. And still works. Okay, so one other thing and then we're done. Let me check the console. So the other thing I want to do is I said that I was using global variables, but I was going to fix that at the end. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything here inside of a closure. So I'm going to create a function that everything here is inside of. And then the thing it's going to return is going to be that. So basically I'm going to move this. Actually, let me tab everything here over one. So everything up to there. And I'm going to add function. So it's an anonymous function. And then it runs all the way to the bottom. And then the return value for calling that function is going to be this function. So return that function. So here's a function that when called returns this function inside the closure. So I want to run that. So that returns a function. And then that whole function gets passed to the document ready. So tab everything over. At the top, dollar sign open. And at the bottom, I close that. So if I've done everything right, it should do exactly the same thing, except all of these symbols are now inside of a closure instead of global. And it seems to work.